How do we find deep holes for speckled trout? These are really productive fishing spots worth your time, but the fact of the matter is that Louisiana's coast is a big place. So how do you know where to go? In this guide, we will take a look at how to locate deep water that speckled trout like to use, and we will do that with 21st century technology, a little practical fishing know-how, and some real life examples. But first, why do speckled trout go to deep water to begin with? We already know why speckled trout ferret out deep water, and that's to seek refuge from harsh conditions. If this concept is new to you, then I strongly suggest checking out my previous guide on why speckled trout seek deep water, then returning here to learn how to find them. Knowing why speckled trout seek deep holes will give you an idea of when to fish them and will enable you to understand the content of this guide much better. So getting back on track. In order to really know how to find deep holes for speckled trout or any game fish that would use them, we must define what exactly a deep hole is and understand how they are formed in the first place. So what is a deep hole? A deep hole is a body of water or a part of a body of water that is relatively deeper than the surrounding area. Examples include, but are not limited to, bends and bayous, canals, dredge holes, passes, and more. Now, the term deep hole is somewhat of a misnomer because not all deep holes on Louisiana's coast are shaped like a hole. In fact, they tend to be shaped more like tubs or swimming pools, but can take many different forms. The key defining future is that they are relatively deeper than the surrounding area they're in. No, this is not a specific depth, such as a fixed number like 10 feet or 25 feet. It's relative. A good example of relative depth would be 10 to 12 feet deep surrounded by marsh that is 3 to 5 foot deep. Or it could be 3 to 5 feet if the surrounding water is 1 to 2 feet. So you see how a deep hole is relative and not absolute. How are deep holes formed? Deep holes are either formed naturally or artificially. Natural deep holes are formed by the movement of water. Anywhere water flows a lot, the depth tends to be deeper. This is because faster current will dig out the bottom, making it deeper. This digging effect is called scouring, and we see it take place in major passes and main bayous. The ultimate example of scouring can be found in the Mississippi River, where she is upwards of 200 feet deep by the French Quarter in New Orleans. This 200-foot depth is located in a bend. Bends tend to create deep holes because the sudden change in direction causes water to scour out the bottom. The French Quarter Bend is about 90 degrees, which is a pretty sharp turn. Well, in places where we see the same bends, we see deep holes too. This bend in Bayou Biloxi is a great example. Whereas the rest of the bayou runs some 9 to 11 feet deep, it's well over 20 foot deep here. Another good example are pinch points, or anywhere water has to flow faster through two larger bodies of water. This bayou between these two ponds is an excellent example. Those ponds run 1 to 3 foot deep, but that bayou is 9 to 11 feet deep. Do you think speckled trout stack in there when the conditions take a dump? Yes, they do. So, Places where water flows the most will produce deeper depths. Places where water does not flow at all is where we see shallower depths. Man-made deep holes. Next, we have deep holes that are man-made. These usually come in the form of anything that has been dredged, which is a uh, which is just a $10 word describing the action of making water deeper by use of mechanical means. This can be done with an excavator to literally scoop out the bottom and haul the spoil onto land, or that dirt could be removed with a large pump located off of the shore in open water. Sometimes you see both put to work, and they can be used to build canals for navigation or borrow pits dug out to build land. A good example of a deep canal would be this one off by Biloxi. Lots of speckled trout can be had there when the conditions are right. A good example of a dredge hole would be Gohagen Canal. Not the canal itself, but the pond just off of it. If you visit this pond, you will see that it's well over 30 foot deep. It's not there because water naturally flows through it like what we saw in Bay Biloxi in the Mississippi River. It's there because it was dredged to, I assume, build land along Highway 90. So now that you have an idea as to how deep holes are formed, both natural and man-made, let's look at how to find them from scratch. How to find deep holes for speckled trout. There are two tools go. that I use to find yeah, deep baby. holes for speckled trout. 
Google Earth Desktop, and Avionics. Oh. And we will get started with Google Earth. But a quick timeout. To be clear, I mean Google Earth Desktop or Jed, not Google Maps. Google Maps is not made for the heavy lifting that Jed can do for inshore anglers like you and me. Google Maps is made for soccer moms looking for the nearest PJs before picking up the kids from school, which is very important, but that is a big difference. And unfortunately, the only way you can use Jed is on a desktop or laptop computer. For whatever reason that is beyond me, the nerd gods of Silicon Valley at Google have not seen fit to grace us mere mortals with a smartphone app that is identical to the desktop version. So, I recommend getting a decent desktop and installing Jed on it. If you think otherwise and keep watching and I'll reveal the painful reasons why you have thought wrong. Identifying deep holes with Jed. You can identify deep holes with Jed by looking over the area you want to fish for anywhere water can flow faster to scour out the bottom. For example, if I wanted to fish deep holes on the south side of Lake Bourne, then I'd consider marking this bend in Bayou Sioux because it features a hard 90 degree turn. In fact, if you look a little further east, you will see another hard turn. So that's two fishing spots that are close to each other. That can make for easier fishing. I would also drop waypoints on the larger bayous connecting the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet to Lake Bourne. That's because a lot of water on either side of these bayous have such a small space to flow through and you can count on these bayous being deeper as a result. Ultimately, you will have to launch a boat to go see for yourself and that's part of the process that I personally use to find and catch fish. Now, not all natural deep holes are this easy to find. Some aren't as defined because the land around them has eroded away or sunk below the water surface. A good example is Creole Gap in the East Biloxi Marsh. The land that was there caused water to flow faster through Creole Gap, making it deeper. Is that deeper water still there? Yes, it is. And I, I know that it is because I've been there and I graphed it. But you can also see it reflected in Avionics sonar chart, another tool that I like to use to find deep holes for speckled trout. Another good example would be the bayous in the sunken marsh of Empire. They're not as easily detected, but they are still there. Identifying deep holes with Navionics. Navionics web app is a tool that I use to look at community source sonar data on their sonar chart product. I use it on their desktop website and their smartphone app. Be advised, this product is not that reliable. You have to take it with a grain of salt. It's not reliable because it is incomplete and some data is inaccurate. After all, it is sourced from the community, not from professionals tasked with graphing these areas like you would see in a Lake Master product. So Navionics Sonar Chart is, at best, a tool in the toolbox. But it does have its usefulness for inshore fishing, and that's what you see here. For example, at first glance, the pond of Gohagen Canal on Google Earth Desktop doesn't look 30 foot deep. But if you looked at it on Avionics, you would see the depth contours and realize that something is going on. Then, after flipping through the historical time slider on Jed, you would see that the bottom detail is never apparent at any point in time when it usually is for any other pond that you would look at. This same process can be applied to lesser known fishing spots that are just as productive. And if you can find them, then you'll have one more honey hole that you can rely on while everyone else is stuck fishing the same old spots. So now that you have an idea how to find deep holes for speckled trout without even launching the boat, you may be thinking of ways you can replicate the same results with different tools. Well, I've been doing this for a long time and I think it's worth mentioning what tools you should not use to find deep holes for speckled trout. Tools I do not recommend using to find deep holes. Like I mentioned earlier, I strongly recommend not using Google Maps for inshore fishing. That's because it only has one set of satellite imagery, whereas Google Earth Desktop has a whole lot more. As a result, you have less information to make good decisions with. For example, if you wanted to find deep holes to fish in Venice, then you may see these bayous connecting the Mississippi River to the marsh on the other side. 
They could be good to fish, so you make a point to check them out. But oh no, you rip off your lower unit because they're actually filled with rocks. If only there was someone who had been there and done that to explain the best way to avoid this. Oh yeah, that's me. Because that's exactly what I did in 2017. At the time, Venice was fairly new to me, and I had no idea that these relief canals dug by the Army Corps of Engineers were reinforced with rocks from top to bottom to prevent scouring. The same kind of scouring we talked about earlier in this video. After a successful morning limiting out on redfish, I began exploring new to me places before donating part of my lower unit to the Mississippi River. If I stuck with navigating and fishing places that I had checked out on Google Earth Desktop, then I would have avoided this tragedy. You should do the same. If you want more information on what happened, then I strongly suggest visiting the blog post I made about the incident. You'll find it linked up below. Now, this does bring us to our next tool to not use to find deep holes for speckled trout, mapping chips. And that's for the same reason you wouldn't use Google Maps. It's only one set of imagery and it tends to be a dated set of imagery. For example, if you used your mapping card for your low rants, Garmin Hummingbird or whatever, to look for deep holes to fish on the south side of Lake Bourne, like we did earlier using Jed, you may find this one bend in Grand Bayou that looks worth trying. But oh no, you go there and get stuck in congratulations because you are now a Cito commercial. Do you want to spend your valuable time on water catching speckled trout, or do you want to spend it learning the hard way about navigational hazards that you could have learned about the easy way on a computer in the comfort of your home? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because looking at Google Earth Desktop reveals that Grand Bayou has long since silted it in. Not only is it no longer a deep hole worth fishing, it's a hazard that could ruin your fishing trip. Here's what to do next. By now it's pretty clear why you should use Google Earth Desktop and not rely solely on mapping chips and really shouldn't use Google Maps at all. Remember, Navionics is a good tool too. You should use these tools to identify about a dozen potentially good deep holes for speckled trout, then go out on the day of your fishing trip and fish them in person. To see how to do that, I strongly suggest watching this next video about the best way to fish deep holes for speckled trout. In it, I explain how to approach them, what tackle to use, and more so you are making casts where it counts and, above all, have fun catching fish. Tight lines, and thanks for watching.